accounting part 16 dilutive securities convertible preferred stock this is Ken Boyd the owner of St. Louis test preparation here's our email address our phone number and a good website from a university where we found a lot of information for this presentation we've talked in the few prior videos about dilutive securities and in the second bullet point there we'd like to you to use the analogy of diluting something in water. If you put Nestle's Quick into a uh, glass, the powder, and you dilute it with milk, that means that you spread that chemical, the Nestle's Quick, over a wider and wider amount. So we dilute things with any other liquid. In the same way, think about earnings per share. We have a bucket of money that represents the earnings for a particular period of time, a month, a quarter, a year. And earnings per share is that dollar amount of earnings divided by the number of shares of common stock outstanding. If you look at the third bullet point here, it says, if we have transactions that result in more common shares outstanding, that means we have fewer dollars for every common share. So in other words, the dollar per common share is diluted. The earnings per share is diluted. And that's what we're going to see in the examples as we go along here. Here are the lists of types of dilutive securities we've talked about in the last few videos. Right now we're going to talk about convertible preferred stock. So let's define first what we mean by convertible preferred stock. Preferred means better when we see the word preferred anything we think that's better than just plain old not preferred for example uh, if you get preferred seating in a restaurant that's better than regular seating and the same thing is true with securities why is it preferred why is it special or better first of all the the amount of the dividend on preferred shares is going to be stated on the face of the certificate it will be a dollar amount per share or a percentage of par second bullet point Preferred dividends are paid before common shareholders get their dividends. And finally, last bullet point, if the company liquidates and there's assets left over, the preferred shareholders have a claim on assets before common shareholders. So that sort of defines preferred stock. Flipping over to Excel here, I say we have a $1,000 IBM Corporation preferred stock certificate. It pays a $1.50 per share each year. That assumes, however, that there are earnings available to pay the dividend. So we have that caveat. If there's no earnings or a loss, the dividend doesn't get paid. It also says on this certificate that the shares are convert. This preferred stock certificate is convertible into 100 shares of common stock. So if we scroll down just a bit, and we look at the November 30, 30th financials, we see we have common stock and additional paid in capital we have preferred stock and additional paid in capital and over here I put the dollar amount of the preferred dividend is that dollar fifty per share that we saw on the certificate multiple multiplied by the two thousand shares that are outstanding so if there are sufficient earnings we're going to pay a preferred dividend of three thousand dollars a year to whoever owns the 2,000 shares of preferred stock. It's convertible finally because we can con convert from a preferred stock into a common stock. So that's the November 30th financials. Let's assume that on March 10th of the following year the owner, in this case Bob Smith, whose name is on the certificate, exercises his option and chooses to convert to 100 shares of common stock. A few things we need to keep in mind for Levi Jean Company, our company that's um, issuing stock in this example. First of all, there's no cash impact because we're going from one issue of stock to another. The other thing is, is that we will not recognize a gain or a loss on this conversion. So here's our debits and credits. We remove the par value of the common stock we remove that $24 per share additional paid in capital. That gets removed. We're going to credit and assume that the, the par value is a dollar 
times 100 shares, we have preferred stock credit of 100. And then this last figure, the 2400, we actually plug in. Because we're not going to recognize a gain or a loss on this conversion, we have to put $2,400 in here for the additional paid in capital to make the entry balance that is debits equal credits. So when we look at our the equity section of our balance of our uh, balance sheet on March 31st after the conversion, you can see that we've taken. Um, we have 100 fewer shares of preferred stock, we're now down to 1,900, and we have 100 greater shares, additional shares of common stock. So we've shifted from 100 shares out of preferred and 100 shares into common stock. The par value went for common stock went up, par value of a dollar times 100. The additional paid in capital for common stock went up from 192,000 to 194,400. Conversely, the preferred stock par value went down by 100 from 2000 to 1900. And the additional paid in capital, which was that plug figure, went, de went down from 2800 less $2,400, and it's now $25,600. We're going to pay fewer, we're going to pay a lower dollar amount in preferred dividends because now there's only 1900 shares outstanding where before there was 2000 So the preferred dividends that we pay out if there's sufficient earnings is 2850 instead of 3000 Now you'll notice, I skipped this on the first go-around, that let's assume we have net income of $7,000. Our earnings per common share, again, per common share, is the net income 7,000 less the preferred stock of 3,000 that leaves us 4,000 to pay common shareholders divided by 8,000 common shares. Let's do that again. Total net income less what we're paying preferred dividend 7 minus 3 is 4,000 divided by the 8,000 common stock shares outstanding means 50 cents available as earnings per common share. When we do our conversion, a few things happen. We're going to say net income stays the same. But now you'll see that we're only subtracting off 2850 for preferred dividends since there's fewer shares outstanding. And the denominator goes from 8,000 shares of common stock, it go it increases to 8100 So we're paying fewer dollars out in preferred dividends, but we have more common stock share, shares outstanding. So our earnings per common share actually goes up slightly to 51 cents. So on the one hand, the conversion was diluted because it created more common stock. On the other hand, since we're paying a fewer dollars out in a preferred dividend, that offsets some of the impact on earnings per common share. So in my example, I made the preferred dividend fairly high. Most of the time, the additional shares of common stock will more than offset the reduction in the dollar amount of preferred dividend. And in fact, the earnings per common share will go down when we convert from preferred to common shares. In this example, it went up slightly or just about unchanged. Flipping back to PowerPoint, that's the end of part 16. Here's our YouTube channel. We have small group chats every month that are inexpensive. We do live one-on-one -on -one tutoring. All of our information is here. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.